Uh, from the library, uh, University Dis Dissertation and Thesis Services, and she's going to tell all of us and the greater students amongst us uh, how to uh, dot the I's and cross the T's and, and, and get all the paperwork done. Right? Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you all for having me ag here again. I always love coming and speaking to the students and faculty here, so I, and I'm, I hope you find it useful because w whether you like it or not, you'll have to work with me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, this is my department. I'm the coordinator of dissertation and thesis services here at Mason. And the reason, I'm, the reason I exist, the reason my department exists, is to make sure that you get your document formatted correctly and that you get it done and turned in on time so that you graduate as you plan. Um, I'm not here to try to make things worse. I can't take away all the stress. I can't take away all the strain. But I can at least try to make things make a little bit more sense. I do not get kickbacks from the university for keeping people here one semester longer than they have to be. If that were the case, nobody would ever graduate ever. <laughs> so, um, Too much honesty. <laughs> so, um, a little about me. I, I, I wrote, when I wrote my thesis at USD, I had to go through all the stupid formatting stuff myself. So I know what it's like. I know it's tedious and it's, some of it is just dumb. And I had to go through the scary format lady. Um, who turned out to not be scary, but I, I know what it's like. So I'm not having I'm not having you do something that I'm not familiar with. I know what it's like. Um, so, and I also on the other side when I uh, did my master's degree in library science, didn't write a thesis, but I had a lot of things to do instead. So I know that you have jobs and families and responsibilities and things to do that are far beyond and far much more far more important than figuring out where your headings go. So I know what it's like. And I am here to make sure that you get your document turned in by one of these upcoming final submission deadlines. Um, anyone planning on graduating this fall? Yes. Okay, great, cool. Um, so, uh, anyone in the spring first? Okay, um, past that summer, okay. All right, so when I, what these deadlines are, that's the final submission deadline. So, when I say final submission, I'm referring to the final day by which you can turn in the final copy of your dissertation in order to graduate in that semester. For this fall, the final, the final deadline is Friday, December 8th at 5 p.m. I have to receive the final copy of your document and all necessary paperwork on or by that date in order for you to graduate. Um, when I say final copy, I'm referring to the version that I've reviewed and approved regarding formatting, the version you have successfully defended, and the version your committee has approved regarding content. So once you've fulfilled all three of those criteria, whether you get that last round of okays from your committee, at 9 a.m. on December 8th, or whether you turn everything in this Monday. As long as I get it by December 8th, you'll be good. Um, the final submission deadline going forward, you know, past these, it's always the Friday before the last day of class. If the last day of class is a Friday, then it's the Friday before that. Okay. All right, so any questions about deadlines? Okay. Cool. There was a footnote on that slide, so that has to include like, all the signatures. Also. Yeah, um, the, with the signature sheet, if you, if you have an issue that, um, so on the one side, if the reason you can't turn in your signature sheet at the time you turn everything else in is because your committee won't sign it or because the dean is refusing to sign it, then in that case, no, I cannot accept your material. But if it's an issue that um, you know your one committee member is out of the country, the dean is, let's say, ill at the time, unfortunately, then if it's one of those issues, then you can just turn everything else in. And then as long as you can get your signature sheet to me within like you know a reasonable amount of time, then that's fine. I also recall something about one December needing to get an email from, I think it was from, from you? Yes, okay. that's correct, yeah, which I will get to okay. shortly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But thank you for asking. Okay. So um, the reason I exist is because, and this I think is true for every school that either requires or asks for theses and dissertations, um, as far as, it, like, the reason that my department was even created was because Mason wants its theses and dissertations to look a certain way, wants sort of a uniformity of design. And as far as I know, the, school, the schools and colleges beyond Mason that I'm familiar with, they have their own set of rules too. If you know of a university or college that does not have formatting guidelines, please let me know. I would just like to know. Did they have them? Did they just give up? Um, so that's why we exist. So if you look on either, if you go to Fenwick Library and go to 5C and pull bound copies off the shelves, if you go to Mars and um, pull like electronic copies of theses and dissertations there, you'll see little differences. Some people have lots of tables and figures, others have none. Um, you'll see different lengths, different fonts, but basically they all kind of look the same. So in order to make that happen, that's why you have to go through format review. Everyone who's writing a dissertation has to go through format review. It's a requirement. 
if anyone tells you no, no, it's okay, you don't have to, that person is lying to you for some reason. Um, that's that's a, it's a, it's a rule. But with that said, I'm here to help. What does the MARS acronym stand for, by the way? Mason Archival Repository Service. It's our institutional remote store. Okay. And sometimes people misunderstand what I'm saying, and they think I'm saying, like, Mark or Mart. And no, it's Mars. <laughs> like the planet. Um, or the god. So if you have any questions today, please ask. Um, if, if after today something either occurs to you or you just don't feel comfortable asking in front of a group of people, you can always contact me. I'll be giving out my contact info. Um, I sent these slides to Karen, and if you could share them with everyone, that'd be great. Um, so if you have any questions today or later, please ask. That's what I'm here for. Okay. So, so yes, sir. no longer Michigan? Well, um, I, that's another good question, of which I will be getting to. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's a good question. Yes, we still do that. So um, I'm going to be passing around my cards. And if you have a colleague in this department or otherwise that would benefit from our services, please take extra cards. Um, if you haven't been to our website yet, it's a great place to start. I'm going to try to give you as much info as I can today, but this the website goes into a little bit more detail, offers a little more info, so please check out our website if you haven't yet. Um, email is always, always the best way to reach me. Um, if, if I'm you know, out of the office or on one of the other campuses or something, I can always get back to you via email. Okay? Um, you can call me, 703-993-2222. I always say this, but my phone number is tragically close to the one for the RAC Center. So um, I get calls about uh, tracks and dodgeball a lot. Um, <laughs> there's one poor lady that I, I can't convince her that I don't work there, so I've just started <laughs> telling her, yeah, your track's ready. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just given up. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've tried giving her the number, and she's like, that's what number I called. I'm like, I, honest to God, I'm not, I don't work there. So now finally, after a while, I'm like, yeah, sure, come on over. We're, we have a dodgeball game starting now. Um, so if you'd like to meet with me, um, if you want to meet with me here on the Fairfax campus, just click on the scheduler link, and I hope it jumps over. If not, then I'll duplicate. Okay. All right, one second. Okay. Um, if you just click on the scheduler icon, we also have it on our website. Are you not going to go? Full screen. Okay, there we go. So you can just choose the day that you want to meet with me. So let's say you want to meet on November the 20th at 3 p.m. Click that time, fill out the form, and you're set. Okay. I also have hours on the. Oops. I also have hours on the Arlington campus. Actually, let's see. Arlington and Prince William campuses. Science and technology. Now I know that I'll never get out of it. So. Oops, sorry. Um, and I, I'll show you in a bit how you can see what days I'm there. Usually I'm on the Arlington campus the second Tuesday of each month, on the uh, Science and Technology campus the fourth Tuesday of each month. And I, in the past, was able to combine all of my times at different campuses at, at the same link, at the same scheduler link, but I'll show you why that doesn't work in a second. Okay. But so, generally, if you'd like to meet with me, as long as I'm available, please set up a time to meet. I'm, in the Fairfa uh, on Fairfax campus, I'm in Fenwick Library. Um, I, I stay. I work at the other two libraries when I have those hours. Okay. So each of the steps in the process, um, I'll go over each of these in further <coughs> detail. But for right now, I kind of want to give you an idea of how they seem to work best together. You don't have to do one, two, three, four, five. You can do three, two, one, four, five. But this is kind of tried and true over time how it seems to work best. So first, you'll work with your committee, prepare your document. Then there's format review, which is often maybe the first time you'll ever talk to me. Um, submission consultation, that's when I make sure you understand, you know what you're turning in, paperwork, things like that. Um, you'll defend. And then there's final submission, and that's when you turn everything in. Okay, so first, for preparation, uh, people ask me how long this lasts, how long writing your actual dissertation lasts. <laughs> it lasts as long as the university and or your department will let you let it last. As far as I'm <laughs> concerned, you can take as long as you want. Eventually, they will kick you out. Not kick you out, but they'll <laughs> say, let's go. But you can take all the time you need as far as you ask. Um, graduation intent form. This is a form that comes from the registrar's office and goes back to them. Um, this is, I always make sure people know about this because with the graduation intent form, this is what you'll turn in uh, to, your, this is what you'll turn into the registrar's office either at the beginning of your final semester or the end of the penultimate semester. This is what tells them I'm planning on graduating. I'm done. 
Um, you'll start to get emails about regalia and any addition, any fees you might have to pay to just fail through the cracks up to this point, things like that. And if for any reason, let's say you're planning on graduating in the spring and you file this and you get right up to the beginning of May and you're like, this isn't going to happen, just withdraw your intent and you can file it again. It happens all the time, happened to me. So you'll send drafts and edits back and forth to your committee and it's always important that you understand that first like with your committee your committee cares about your content it's not that i don't care it's just that i'm never going to write back and say rewrite this recalculate that and if i tell you to recalculate anything just ignore me um <laughs> that no it's bad but so your committee cares about your content that's what they're looking at i care about your formatting so you don't have to worry about getting your content into its final perfect form to send me your document for format review because I'm not going to know whether it's right or not because that's not what I look at. Um, on the other hand, if your committee looks at your looks at your formatting and says, "Oh, it's fine," say thank you, that's great, and then send it to me because they're probably wrong. Um, because formatting is not what they look at. So, don't wait until you have that final comma in place. Send me your document for format review, which we'll talk more about in a second. That was a question about December first. Um, the better, you, the earlier you can do it, the better. At some point you'll set your defense date, and that is entirely up to you and your committee. I have nothing to do with this. Uh, I don't even know when you defend unless you just happen to tell me. And along the way you'll prepare for your format review. And if you haven't already, um, check out our site. We have guides, instructions, templates that are designed to try to make things easier for you. Um, and when it comes to formatting, and I'll talk more about this in a second, when it comes to formatting your document, it really is a case of the ends justifying the means. As long as your document is formatted correctly, I don't care how you get it there. As long as it looks right, whether you use the Word template, the LaTeX template, whether you start with a blank page in a word processing program and build your own formatting around it, whether you pay someone to do it, I don't care. It's That's up to you, as long as it's correct. So, I have for a the question about the tools. Yes, sir. Um, when I went to download the, the guidelines, mm -hmm. because I did not use your template, okay. mm -hmm. um, the, they had different dates on them. So there was the quick one had a date on it that was, I think it was a couple years earlier well, yeah. than the most recent one. So I looked at this and said, well, which one am I it's, supposed to use it's then? It's the but same thing. I, it, yeah, after yeah. I looked at it, it turned out to be basically the same thing. Yeah. And it's the, the, re, the reason, I think I changed one little tiny thing on the um, on the quick reference guide. Okay. So they're the same thing. The big one, I, I'll... I'll show you on the page what he's talking about. There's the long guide, which goes into minute detail about everything. And then there's the quick reference guide that's only like a page and a half. It's like two and a half pages longer. And it's it's just a distillation of the big guide. So when your document is ready for format review, um, you do not have to be present when it takes place. You don't have to make an appointment with me. You just email it to me. And I have people ask me, can I, can I be there when you do your format review? And I mean, I, I can't imagine that you don't have something better to do than sit and watch me look at a computer for 20 minutes, but you know, if that's how you get your kicks. So um, I always recommend sending me your document at least two to three weeks before your defense date, um, but that's just the suggestion. So, and I'll, I'll expound, 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 expand upon this in a minute, but um, that's just the suggestion. The earlier you can do the format review with me, the better off you are. Okay. Um, you asked me about the deadline. We do have a format review deadline. Um, it's this for this semester it's friday december 1st at 5 p.m it's always going to be the week before final submission so in the spring i believe it's april 27th at 5 p.m and the way that works um, by that date slash time you have to have an email from my office stating your formatting is in good shape and your format review is over so whether you receive that email from me if you're planning on graduating in this semester whether you receive that email from me on september 1st or whether you get it at 4 45 p.m on the first of december that's all that matters you just have to have that and the reason i have it is not to be punitive it's not to make things harder it's purely logistical uh, the week leading up to final submission those three weeks during the year are my three busiest weeks uh, so at that point there's a very good chance i won't be able to do any format review uh, during that time and also on the other side i don't like telling people no it doesn't make me happy so if someone sends me their document for the very first time say on december the 7th then I'm, and I've never seen it, never done a review, I'm probably going to have to tell that person, I'm sorry, but you're not going to, I'm not gonna be able to get this format review done and you're not gonna graduate this semester. And that doesn't make me happy. So, refrain from making me unhappy. <laughs> so, at the, for the format review, I check it and respond with any changes you may need to make. Um, generally, I, I try not to take any more than two business days to respond. Um, in, earlier in the semester, I'm, I, 
my response time is faster as we get closer to the final submission deadline it gets slower um with that said if you ever send me a document and i have not responded in some way within four business days either with your review or to say i'm sorry i've been sick i had an emergency so that we've been very busy um, please check with me because people have sent it's rare but people have sent documents and they just never make it also another thing that happens and this is just an outlook issue um, if you send me an email that in the subject line just says format review and three other people send me an email that says just format review in the subject line it stacks in so yours might unfortunately get buried because I'm concentrating on someone else so please check with me so how many uh, just as a matter of interest how many do you have to review this per semester like? uh, per semester um, summer's the lightest so I usually end up having at the end um, I usually have in the summer probably about like 80 people um, in the fall fall is usually has in the past couple of years has been about 130 140 and spring is usually about 215 220 so yeah so about per year like 450 usually about so on average um, usually it takes more than one round of review uh, sometimes it only takes one round and that's great sometimes it takes three or more two is usually how it works you send me your document I review it write back and say change these things and usually I will say please resubmit I'll, and I'll let you know you don't have to guess um, but usually it does take two rounds of review so with the suggestion two to three weeks before your defense date like I said that's just the suggestion so if you're planning on graduating in the spring if you defend on April 1st if you send me your document on March 14th perfect that's within my suggestion but if you don't send me your document until April 15th that's fine too I'll still review it but your content and your defense those are the important things and I see it far too often that people wait until the very end to start formatting or start working with me and it's really frustrating for them which I understand um, so the earlier you can get me out of the way the better off you'll be the happier you'll be so get me done so for submission consultation at this point um, I'll email the information to you about what you have to do so once you pass the format review then I'll send you an email that gives you a list of everything you'll have to do for final submission if you'd like to meet with me to discuss these steps you're welcome to most people don't which I understand um, but it just goes through you know turn in this form and just do that okay. one of the things that I will talk about uh, is what happens to your document ultimately um, since January 2013 we have placed all of our documents as electronic copies in Mars um, you'll turn in a PDF to me you can either bring it on a flash drive prior for our final submission appointment which I will give back to you or you can email it to me prior to the appointment um, once your document becomes available in Mars, anyone who is able to find it, whether that person is a faculty or staff or member or a student here at Mason or a, per or a stranger on the street in Peru, if they can find that document, they can read the entire thing, full text, open access. We can't block discoverability in Google, so if someone searches for your name or a term or something that would that would bring that document that would bring your record up, they can see it. Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah. So, with that said, about availability. You also have the option to make your work available as soon as possible in Mars, or you can choose to delay its availability for six months, one year, or five years. Okay. Uh, anything you don't want people to see, if you choose to embargo your work, let's say, for one year, um, for that one year, people will not be able to see the, the actual document, but they can still see your record, which means your name, title, search terms, and abstract. So if there is something you do not want people to see, a name, a term, a place, a date, whatever, do not put it in your search terms or abstract or title because people can still see that it's not a totally dark art okay. um, everyone turns an embargo request form if you choose to delay your work for any period uh, you'll need to get signatures from your committee chair and the graduate associate dean of college or school um, for some colleges and schools requesting an embargo is almost a rubber stamp the committee chair and the dean say okay great sure thanks um, with others you have to convince them of why it's a good idea which I'll talk about in a second they may ask you why do you think you should do this you tell them and your dean and or committee chair says okay I get it or mm, I'm not really understanding why you need this um, at the far end of the spectrum I, don't, I think this might change uh, the Shar school at, at least up until recently um, and by that I mean today does not allow their students to embargo for any reason that might change but right now that's that has been the case up until this point okay. as for making your work available now or later there's no right choice the right choice for one person is not necessarily the right choice for the next one um, the reasons people choose to embargo their work generally it's a um, I call it the three P's the most common reasons uh, if you're working on a patent and your patent isn't through yet 
if your work has a privacy or security or sensitivity issue um, and you're comfortable with people seeing your work, say maybe in three years or not three months. Um, the last question is about publication. People ask me if my work is available in an open access format, will that have a good or bad effect on my ability to publish? And my answer, unfortunately, is it depends. I wish I could say yes, it will or no, it won't. But it depends on your field. It depends on your specific subject. It depends on the journal or publisher that you're working with. So what I always tell everyone, if you're not sure whether you should make your work available now or later, talk to your committee, uh, talk to people in your field. If there is a publisher or journal you know you want to work with, they should have a policy on record. So you contact them and just ask if my work is available, open access in a repository, will you still publish my work? Will that be a problem? Okay. So any questions about that? So ProQuest, you were asking about Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, does any um, ProQuest for anyone who doesn't know, ProQuest is a um, it's a subscription service. University libraries pays the fee to make their materials available to our students and faculty generally for free. It started at, and the one we're focusing on today. There's a system of databases, and they have a lot of different ones. But um, the thesis and dissertation database is the one that's relevant here. Uh, it started out as um, let's see. University Microfilms International, then it was UM, then it was University of Michigan, and um, then it was, now it's UMI, and then it became ProQuest, so. And they still have the microfish machines. I did a, they do. I did a tour of their Michigan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do, they do still, yeah, they do yeah. still microfilm everything. Yep. And uh, they are, and all of, all of the um, ultimate films and fishes are kept in a cave, a secret cave somewhere. Yep. I'm not making this up. <laughs> I promise you that I am not making up the secret cave. Um, we do that. Then he'll tell you about that. That's really neat. Yeah. I've, I've only heard. I've heard about it, and I was actually. And people say, you know, why would they do that? It's microfilm. It's actually the microfilm. Believe it or not, is one of the most sturdy, stable ways to retain information. It'll last longer than a CD. Oh yeah, that way. Yeah. Yeah. You can. I mean, you can take like microfilm and like crumple it up. And flatten it out, and it's—I mean—it might be a little ugly, but you can still read it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we do. Mason requires all of their doctoral stu um, doctoral students' works to be submitted to ProQuest. Uh, this is in the catalog. This is not just something I made up to torment. Um, I have other torments. Um, <laughs> master students are welcome to submit their work to ProQuest if they want to, but we do still require our doctoral students to do so. Okay. Um, in the in the very beginning, from the very first dissertation we received, uh, back then people had to turn in a third hard copy and we would ship that off to Ann Arbor, Michigan, they microfilm it. Uh, then we transitioned to requiring CDs with paperwork and that went on for a while and now we do the administrator. So it does the same thing, you just fill out everything online, upload your document. Yep. They also have an embargo option. Um, their set limits are six months, one year, and two years. Uh, if you want to do five years with us and you also want to do five years with them, just let me know and I'll do it manually. Uh, if you would like to purchase bound copies through ProQuest, you are welcome to do so. Um, I think they're about, I think if you buy one or two copies, I think it's $55, $56. Uh, the more copies you buy, the more the, the cheaper each individual copy is. Um, the one issue that I always make sure people know, I even if you turned in your document to me right this second and I processed it in ProQuest, you, and like right after you did it, you might not get a bound copy for like three or four months. So if you need a bound copy and you need it fast, don't go to ProQuest. I can give you other information. And we have binaries listed on our site. Um, if you would like ProQuest to register your work for the U.S. Copyright Office on your behalf, you are welcome to do so. Um, that's a $55 fee, and that goes to the U.S. Copyright Office. Um, they're just pro if you did it directly through them without ProQuest being the intermediary, we would still pay that. Um, not if you decide not to register your work through uh, the U.S. Copyright Office, you're welcome to. That does not mean you do not have copyright. It just means that you did not opt for an extra little level of protection. Okay, so at your defense. Take your signature sheet with you. Um, we have we have uh, templates for every um, college, school, uh, and department within the, not every department, but everybody within the system. Okay. Take black pen, but I can't say that enough. Um, <laughs> uh, at your defense, I always hope that your committee will say, gosh, that's great, don't change your other copy. But yeah, that's what I hope for. But I mean, they might say, please, you know, Please rewrite this. We'd like to see you explore that. We didn't think you were an English major. Um, hopefully they don't say that. Uh, but at your defense, at that point, you probably will have gone through the format. And if you have, um, anything that they ask you to add or take away, as long as it adheres to the formatting that I've already approved, you're fine. But you know, if you have already gone through format review and then you defend and your committee says, 
change this and you just want to make sure it's okay, by all means, send me your document one more time, 10 more times. It's totally up to you. And I'll look at it and most of the time I'll say it's fine or it could be, you know, your margins are off here. Yeah. Then there's final submission. And that's the big one. Question on the last slide. Oh, is sure. it, will, will, there, will there ever be a time when, when the black pen part will be relaxed? <laughs> you know, actually, I would love to get to the point that we don't even have signature sheets. Yes. That would be great. Yeah. Like, this is, I, th I think everyone thinks that I've just, like, came up with signature sheets just to make people unhappy. <laughs> and, I, like, no, I mean, uh, this is, signature sheets are, I mean, they've been around forever. The only school that I know of, and, again, this could, like, t tell me if I'm wrong, the only school that I know of that does not use signature sheets at all anymore is Virginia Tech. They have just completely done away with it. If, if for you know, ritual sake, a committee chair or a department says, we would really still like for you to have a signature sheet. We want to, we want you to get signatures. They can, they can do that. That's fine. But to fulfill university requirements, they don't have to do that anymore. It's in, instead, there's they have a system where the committee chair, the committee's deans, whoever, go in and you know click I approve this, and then it goes forward. Um, one thing I did find out, Mason is one of the few schools that has people beyond the committee sign the signature sheets. That's, um, it's, and in the beginning it made sense, because, you know, when it was, when Mason was a much smaller school and they liked the idea of it being this collaborative process and, you know, the, you know, the dean's sign and everything. Now that, you know, we have like 40 some thousand people, it makes much less sense. And, you know, especially with larger schools like the College of Science and College of Humanities and Social Sciences, they're signing like hundreds of these. So, yeah, I, I well, would love to. Does black ink make any sense? Black ink, well, actually, a lot of other schools even use blue because they want to make sure that it's not just a copy of it. So, the black ink, I don't know if that will ever change, but the fact that, I mean, the fact that right now they're still trying to, they're still fighting out whether there should be a signature like, under committee, if there should be a standard that all the names are always used or none of the names are used, because that's another thing. Um, some of the some of the you know, some of the colleges and schools here don't have names listed under under committee at all. Others have all of them. Other like the Shar School has names but no title, so like there's no Doctor Blah Blah Professor Such and Such, and that's fun. <laughs> so. and does there have to be original signatures? Um, good question. Most of the time, uh, original signatures are, are good if you can get them. If you have a committee member that say is on sabbatical or has moved or something. Um, then if that person has an electronic signature, like an actual, something that looks like a signature, not a little box that says, I verify this. So if it, that's, we can accept that. Um, but it has to be in black, right? It has to be in black. Um, <laughs> yeah. The mine's in blue. Well, if it's, if it's only one, then I can get, like, I, I can just trace over it. <laughs> I mean, it's like more than that, then it, um, it kind of becomes a little plagiarism. Not plagiarism, but a little, you know, a little dicey. But um, as for this, like, sometimes people ask me, you know, if I have, Four flood committee members, can I do sign scan send for each of them? It starts to get iffy because you know one version sign scan sent is okay. Usually, right. the more you yeah. do it, the more it starts to warp. So yeah. if you have like a if you can if you can do two and it still looks pretty clean and not you know crinkly messy, that's okay. But two or, and two or more on in the sign scan send yeah. version gets a little dicey. But electronic signatures, as long as it looks like an actual signature, that's okay. So final submission, um, as long like as long as you get everything turned in by those dates, you're good. If you when you bring everything, as long as it's correct and complete, the final submission appointment will take all of about five minutes. Which I understand begs the question: Why should I make an appointment if it takes you five minutes? Horror story. <laughs> um, a few years ago, I was on the Arlington campus, and I had been working with this one student for a while. She passed format review; everything was done. All that was left was for her to put her document in. So I was on the Arlington campus that day, and she sent me an email because my office was dark, the door was locked. She sent me an email, where are you, when are you coming back to your office? And I was like, uh, tomorrow I'm in Arlington right now. And she was like, but I need to turn in my material. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna be back tomorrow. And she was like, no, I can't wait until tomorrow. And I said, well, come to Arlington, I'm here until eight o'clock. So what it turned out, she was on her way, her husband had bought her this lovely trip to Paris for like three weeks. And they were, they were on the way to Dallas to get on a plane in like two hours. Um, and she just stopped by my office to turn everything in. She was like, yeah, well, Sally will be there. I'll drop it off and they'll go to Paris. And that, uh, unfortunately, I was not there. So I just told her, um, you know, and I had appointments. So it's not like I could just go, oh, yeah, I'll be there in a second because people were meeting with me in Arlington. But I said, well, just slide everything under the door. And when I get back tomorrow, I'll check it out. If there's anything missing, I'll let you know. 
So think about that. So like this, this person probably spent the next first 24 hours of her trip, which sounded like a lovely trip, <laughs> thinking about, you know, am I going to have to buy the printer? Am I going to have to like fill out new paperwork? And I'm, am I going to have to send this to Sally again? So I tell everybody, sip champagne on your plane. Do not cry on the way to Charles de Gaulle. Just make an appointment. That's all you have to do. Take t like two minutes. Make an appointment. Come in and give me the stuff and do whatever you want to afterwards. At that point, I process your paperwork. I don't check your formatting again. I sign one form, give you a copy of it, and then you're done. And you should go celebrate because you're a doctor now. You've done something really big. And I always, always ask people, how are you going to celebrate? And they say, sleep or cry. <laughs> and, and those are perfectly fine pursuits. I enjoy sleeping and crying, not necessarily at the same time, um, because it can be it can be kind of difficult. Cry yourself to sleep. Just cry yourself to sleep. You know, you know, like waking up crying. That's a really scary one. But yeah, so do some sleeping and crying, but also find time to fit in something good for yourself. And so whatever that means to you, whatever your celebration means, that you you know eat an entire buffet of food, that you drink a case of champagne, that you buy yourself that llama you've always wanted. <laughs> you know, I, like that's it's up to you. You like, there's no wrong way to celebrate, mostly. Um, so, do something good for yourself. So, in review, you'll prepare your document, work with your committee. Then, once you feel like your document's ready for format review, email it to me. I'll check it, respond to changes, um, send you the submission consultation information, tell you paperwork you'll have to turn in, tell you about the administrator, things like that. Um, then there's defense, and then you turn everything in to my office, and that is followed by champagne buffet and or lot. <laughs> or I'll pack it. They're smaller and nicer. So, thank you all for listening. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Anything? Yes, ma'am. So the final submission is, um, it's not a hard copy, is it? No, no. no, no, no. Um, yeah, you you don't turn in, um, well, the forms are The paper, forms, forms are is what we have to um, set a um, set an appointment for That's to bring right. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you'll set the appointment to bring the forms, and then uh, for your actual document, you can either bring it on a flash drive, which I will return to you, or you can email it to me, and then mm -hmm. I'll process your paperwork, save the document, and you're done. Okay. And the other thing, I mean, sometimes people will just forget, and if you've already uploaded your document to ProQuest, that's okay, I'll just rip it from ProQuest. Okay. Um, did you, so submitting the had the pre certification, mm -hmm. why haven't you want to submit an ex some electronic results like a movie or computer code? That's fine. How You're, do you do that? Um, you would just give me that material as well, and when we, um, in whatever, you can either email it to me, flat, you know, bring it to me, and then, um, I can't think of one right off the top of my head, but we also, there are some of our files in Mars and ProQuest that have supplemental files. So there would be, in the record, there would be your document itself, and then performances, code, images, whatever you'd like. I need you to take care of that automatically. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. David's uh, Massad's oh, yeah, uh, yeah. dissertation had it has all his code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. I, was, I couldn't think of anyone right off the top of my head, but we've had people who, you know, especially like especially students who are in College of Visual Performing Arts. Maybe they had a performance that they choreographed or a, like composition, something like that. So yeah, yeah, that's a problem. We can totally take care of that. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. So, so I've submitted to you for the initial review. Yes. You gave it back to me with mm -hmm. some changes to make. I made those changes, mm -hmm. and then so did my committee and myself after that. So mm -hmm. I've, you know, a lot of changes have been made mm -hmm. since you last saw it. Mm -hmm. Do I roll the dice and just show up for final submission, or should I show up, send it back to you again for another review? I mean, I don't know how much That's work you totally want. That's totally up to you. Okay. That's totally up to you. If you would like to, <laughs> if you want to just make sure it's okay, yeah. by all means, please send it to me. I'll check it, let okay. you know. Um, if if you and uh, this is what I tell people, I trust you. I believe that you know what you're doing. So, ah. if yeah, we <laughs> 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 yes. don't even believe that. <laughs> so, if, if, so if you're comfortable with it, if you if you think it's in good shape, then you don't have to resubmit. But if you just want, you know, that you know extra nod, mm -hmm. I'm happy to look at it. Yeah, I'll be sending it to you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, no problem. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody? Question. So, so, so we always run our PhD dissertations through plagiarism detection mm -hmm. software just for purposes of uh, value. Just make sure. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you guys have any, th have any recommended uh, software for doing that or anything? I, I personally myself do not. Um, I, have you, I don't know if you've talked to the Writing Center or th they might have some suggestions. That's, that's kind of more of their people house. Okay. So they, they might be able to assist you with, um, with recommendations. Okay. Someone asked me if, if I would start doing that. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's not going to add more. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you.
but yeah, that, they might have. They would have probably better suggestions. For that. Okay, and then one, one question is some social okay. norms. Yep. Uh, maybe I can ask this on behalf of my colleague, Professor Crooks. Is that uh, <laughs> is there standard terminology across the university for whether to use the term dissertation versus thesis? That's a good question. Um, so this is this is not necessarily <laughs> our. This is not Mason's rule. Um, what I've understood over time is that pretty much everywhere outside of America, it's a thesis. You write a thesis. For some reason, in, in, in America, I'm not going to say this for every school, every university you'll run into, but master students write theses, doctoral students write dissertations. And that's, I don't know who decided that, but that's just kind of, it's, it's like we love calling them dissertations and not using the metric system. So be, in, that, in, that, in that sense, then, it would be incorrect to say something like, you know, a student, a student has written a PhD thesis which constitutes his or her dissertation. That's it's, it's, really I mean, it's not wrong. It's just um, here, in, it, like anywhere else you'd say it, you would write a PhD thesis. Here, you write a dissertation. And I, I doubt anyone's going to get upset. I'm not. Some of us just get confused a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's, I completely understand it. It's just one of those weird things that we do here. We had some question yesterday at Sean's thing. Did those get answered? Uh, the good one did. Yeah. So you can submit the code and it automatically gets uploaded into MAD. Mm -hmm. What do you want? And, if, and if, you, if it comes back, you can just email me. Yeah. And stuff like that that um, take a lot of space, should we just zip file? Yep, that's totally fine. And if, uh, um, because, and that's actually one of the reasons, um, I don't know if, if any students remember the, um, the previous version of our email that we had before we got Outlook, but it, it, its storage capacity was pathetic. I would have to delete messages just to get new messages. So yeah. I started a Gmail account to circumvent that issue, but um, now it's Outlook's better. But still, I mean, people will send me documents that are enormous. It's, it's, that especially happens a lot with the climate dynamics. Students, their documents are enormous. Um, but otherwise, you can do a zip file. If that doesn't work, um, you can do Dropbox. Um, Google Drive. I would not recommend, I get this question sometimes, um, if you are just starting to work on your document I, and, you, and if you use the Word template, don't do it, don't create it as a Google document. For some reason it just, no, it just the it sends the formatting all wonky. Yep. Yep. So you can save it as a document on Google Drive, but don't, you know, like a Word document there, but do not create it in, as a Google Doc because it doesn't yep. work. Yep. Thank you. Any Thank other you. questions? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. I really appreciate it. This is great. And again, if, um, and I'm clapping for you, not me. I'm, I'm not, yeah. I'm like, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what round of applause for myself. But if you have any questions, please let me know. That's what I'm here for. Um, let's see. So final submission coming up in a couple weeks or three weeks, yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I will see some of you then. Yeah. Right. Thank, thank you, you so good. much. Um, yes. And when should I expect? I should um, I should be able to get back to you today, and if not today, then I'll, this is my door.